السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد uh, إن شاء الله the section 34 from the uh, book حسن المسلم دعاء الهم والحزن the uh, supplication for worry and sadness so uh, we mentioned last time that uh, this time he mentions alham walhuzn or alhazan and the next section is alkarb and he mentioned that the difference between karb and hazan or huzn is that uh, the karb is sadness that is mixed with uh, difficulty right uh, so this is the case Alham, worry and huzn or hazan, sadness Ham is what worries you something in the future uh, and hazan or huzn is sadness and it is something that has already happened to you and it caused you sadness as for the worry usually is for something that you expect to happen it's worrying you and we mentioned that inshallah generally this uh, ham, hazan, uh, karb, yani worry, sadness, uh, grief, depression, all of these inshallah are you know, very close to one another and these duas are meant for all of these inshallah. Uh, he starts with uh, the hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the hadith number 120. Which says, Allahumma inni abduk ibn abdik ibn amatik nasiyati biyadik. O Allah, I am your slave servant, the son of your slave servant, the son of your female slave servant, nasiyati biyadik. My forelock, nasiyah is this part here. So my forelock is in your hand. It means that you have full control over me. Madin fiya hukmuk, your rule, your decree is coming to pass regarding me. Adlun fiya qada'uk, whatever you judge regarding me is just or fair. As'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak, I ask you by every name that belongs to you, sammayta bihi nafsak, that you named yourself, aw anzaltahu fi kitabik, or you sent down in your book. أو علمته أحد من خلقك or you taught anyone of your creation أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك or you kept with you for your own self يعني you did not share it with anyone else you kept it for yourself in the knowledge of the unseen you kept it uh, hidden that is in the knowledge of the hidden world the unseen with you, you kept it with you. I ask you by all of this, all of these names, to make the Quran the spring of my heart. Yani the comfort, the enjoyment, like the people are enjoying and comfortable uh, during the springtime. Wanura Sadri, the light for my chest. Wajala Husni, the removal, the clearing or the clearance of my sadness hammi, and the going away of my worries right so now this hadith this is the dua is a very uh, nice and powerful dua uh, that we should try our best to memorize it and to use it uh, inshallah ta'ala uh, at the end of this hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Illa adhab Allahu hammahu wa hazana wa abdalahu makanahu faraja." That if you say this, no servant who is struck with sadness or worry, and then he says this, 
except that Allah will make his worry and sadness go away and he will replace him instead of it he will replace him with relief hmm? faraj okay. so it starts by showing humility and submission to Allah and confession of servitude and worship that you are your slave servant I am your slave servant not only that the son of your slave servant the son of your female slave servant so I am your servant and my father and my mother too right yani showing complete humility humbleness and submission to Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala so you are not only my owner you are the owner of me and my father and my mother you know this and he shows complete ownership and complete submission and humility to Allah Azza wa Jal nasiyati biyadik as I mentioned is the forelock so uh, if the forelock is in his hand subhanahu wa ta'ala it means he can make you do whatever he wants he is in full control of you so you're saying I am under your complete and full control so I, I am completely your servant and I am completely under your management you do whatever you want regarding me Adlun, uh, then he says Madin fi hukmuk yani your rule your judgment your decree regarding me is going to come to pass so you are also uh, again Yani knowing and confessing that whatever Allah rules regarding you, it will come to pass, it will happen. And on top of that, you say, whatever you judge, whatever you decree, I view it to be fair and just. Adlun fi qada'uk. So whatever you decreed for me, although it could have been something that is painful, something that is causing sadness worry and grief yet you say I am under your full control you do what you want regarding me and whatever you do to me is just and fair عدلن فيا تضاؤك then after uh, all of this يعني after this confession here عدلن فيا قضاؤك whatever happens to me that's exactly what should happen to me it is fair it is just. See here, you are struck with a calamity and you're saying, that's fair and just. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, you know, opposing this at all. Right? Now after this introduction of full submission and humility to Allah Azza wa Jal, now, as'aluka. Right? I ask you. Right? So now, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and here he says listen by every name every name that belongs to you huwalak that it is belonging to you right so you are asking by every name that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether that name you named yourself with right or you sent down in your book you sent it down in any of the books that were revealed to the prophets or you taught any of your creation from the prophets or the angels Allah might teach them things that he does not teach others right so I'm asking by every name that you called yourself you named yourself sent down in your book or taught any one of your creation that you did not teach the others right or you kept with you you kept with you that you made it special and specific to you yourself in the law knowledge of the unseen ilm al -ghayb. in a way meaning that nobody knows it except you so I'm asking you even by the name that you did not tell anyone else about the name that you kept for yourself within yourself right uh, now 
we know the famous hadith which says that Allah has 99 names, 100 less one, right? The one who knows them, the one who memorizes them, he will enter paradise, right? Here, you can see that every name of Allah that he called himself, sent down in his book, taught any of his creation, or kept for himself within the knowledge of the unseen. So this tells us that the names of Allah are many. Some of them, even Allah did not even teach the people. He did not tell anyone about them. So this tells us that that hadith which says that surely Allah has 99 names, 100 less one, the one who memorizes them enters paradise, right? It does not say here that the names of Allah are only 99. It does not say that. It does not restrict his names to 99, right? Because from this hadith, we know that has, he has many more names, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only the one who knows those 99 and memorizes them, worships Allah according to them, he will enter paradise. So it's like you say, I have a hundred dollars, I prepared for sadaqah, or I prepared for such and such thing. This does not say that you don't have more than 100. <laughs> you have 100 that you assigned for that purpose, right? But you might have much more. So those 99 names of Allah, the one who memorizes them, he enters paradise. This is why you find the scholars competing in writing different books about the names of Allah and about which ones are the ones that are meant to be the 99, right? So they try to extract those from the Quran and the Sunnah and they uh, authored books in this regard. However, the names of Allah are more than 99. And you ask Allah Azzawajal now that to make the Quran the delight of my heart. The delight of my heart. The word Rabia, it means spring, as was mentioned. But then the time or the spring time is the time where, you know, the nice weather and you get the, you know, everything becomes nice and the people become happy and start going out and enjoying and all of that. So it's a time of delight. So you're asking Allah to make the Quran the happiness, the delight of your heart, meaning that it will cause your heart to be happy. It will take away and remove away from your heart all kinds of sadness, worry, grief, depression, right? By the Quran, right? To make the Quran the delight of my heart and the light of my chest. It will, cause, it will cause my heart to light up, meaning, once again, to be opened up. If, if, the, if the chest is lit up, right, it has light in it, then it means the darkness is not there. So the gloominess and the darkness and the worry and the stress and the depression, all of this is away from it. Also, وَجَلَاءَ حُزْنِي to make it the removal of my sadness, uh, that it will be a cause that my worry will be uh, going away completely from me. So this is one dua that he mentions. Another dua, which is number 121 in the book, is a famous dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wal-ajzi wal-kasal والبخل والجبن وضلع الدين وغلبة الرجال It says this is in Bukhari uh, the hadith from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. it says oh Allah I seek refuge I seek protection with you from worry and sadness inability and laziness stinginess and cowardness or being cowardly and the being overcome by 
deaths and also being overcome or beaten or compelled by the men by the men here once again you have Ham and Hazan Ham worry is regarding what you expect to happen Hazan is something already happened and is causing you to be sad so if someone went through the exam already and failed that's sadness now and if one has an exam and he is about to do it now he has all kinds of worries about that exam right Ham and Hazan worry and sadness طيب العجز والكسل العجز والكسل عجز when you are unable عجز unable كسل when you are lazy so the عاجز maybe he wants to do something he wants he has the will right but he doesn't have the power he doesn't have the ability right so this is now an obstacle for him he wants but he can't he's unable inability is there although he wants the other side is laziness the lazy one he has ability but he doesn't have the will he doesn't have the willpower right so he can do it but he doesn't want that's laziness right so both of them are obstacles both of them are barriers right you want to achieve you want to achieve so if you want to achieve but you are unable this is al-ajz inability and if you are able but you don't want you're not thinking about it you don't have those hopes and aspirations that's the laziness and both of them will make you basically be somewhat chained or crippled or <laughs> held back from achieving your goals so I seek refuge with you from inability and laziness والبخلي والجبن stinginess and cowardness right uh, both again they are uh, يعني deficiencies that hold you back right financially you are you know scared and greedy you don't want to spend right so it holds you back from benefiting from your own money you have it but you don't and it's a strange thing you find so many people they have a lot but then you they look like a poor person yeah. and you find yourself after talking to them you are the one who's poor compared to them they are very rich they are in their accounts they have so much but then they act and look eat and drink and dress <laughs> like like someone who's a destitute complete destitute right بخل. so they have the money but then they are not benefiting from that جبن, being a coward again Allah has given you ability Allah has given you uh, a body and uh, you know uh, a willpower you know يعني, you should have you, being, you should be using this and you should be brave you should jump in, in things to do things that are beneficial for you but then being a coward you chicken out right as they say this makes you again holding back and you're not benefiting so you're not benefiting from your wealth بخل, stinginess or you're not benefiting from your body that Allah has given you because of being a coward so seeking refuge with, the, from, with Allah from these two problems these two defects that will hold you back وَضَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ وَغَلَبَتِ الرِّجَالِ ضَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ ضَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ here uh, is basically the root meaning here the root meaning of ضَلَع is uh, being crooked right 
So uh, this is the case. So what is meant by it here, the, the, when you are indebted and you have debts, those debts, they, like, they are like heavy weights that are put upon you, right? So some of the scholars of the past, they said that the worry of debts does not enter the heart of a person except that it will make some of his sanity, some of his intellect go away and it will not come back. That peace that went away, it will not come back because of the uh, debt. That's why in, in one of the ahadith, Rasulullah said, لا تخيفوا. Do not scare yourself by taking a loan and being indebted. Do not scare yourself. Do not terrify yourself. After you take the loan, of course, this is if you are a truthful person. Now, you took a loan <laughs> and you want to give it back. Not like those who, yani, some people we know for years and they continue to borrow from people. Right? They don't return the money. They just continue to borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. That one, Rasulullah said about him, the one who uh, takes a loan from the people with the intention of returning it, Allah will fulfill on his behalf. The one who takes the loan from the people, not intending to return it, to, de to destroy it, as in the hadith, atlafahu Allah. Allah will destroy him, right? With his evil intention towards the money that he took from the people, he borrowed, but his intention is to destroy, to use it up and consume it and not to pay it back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys that person. So here, when you are indebted, you will be, uh, you know, overcome, you will be under stress, right? And that's why in one of the ahadith, uh, he was asked, alayhi salatu wasalam, that you seek refuge a lot from, you know, al-maghram, yani being indebted. He said that the man, if he uh, gets or becomes indebted, he speaks and he tells a lie. And he promises and he breaks his promise. Tomorrow I will give you, after tomorrow I will give you. They knock at the door, you tell the son, tell him I'm not here today. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> because you want to run away from the debt. That's, that's what happens to people. Unless, you know, they're really sincere and strong in their faith. Uh, but then being overcome by men, by, uh, by debt, sometimes people will not show up. Those who are sincere and they can't pay, <laughs> they don't even show up because they're too much, you know, stressed out. They don't want to meet the people and tell them, you know, I can't pay you back, right? So this is something that is too stressful. So you seek refuge with Allah from being overcome by debts. Also, غَلَبَتِ rijal, Being uh, overcome by uh, men, يعني, being compelled by them, them having authority over you, and then they end up oppressing you. So either those uh, men, they are either oppressors, oppressing you, or maybe uh, you are indebted to them, or, or the likes of that. So this dua is one of the most comprehensive duas of the Prophet Wasallam that we should all inshallah try to learn and use Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wal-ajzi wal-kasal wal-bukhli wal-jubn wa dala'i al-dayni wa ghalabat al-rijal right dala'i al-dayn wa ghalabat al-rijal this is a very important dua that we need to uh, memorize if you look at it here there are a lot of causes of worry and sadness in this land and other, otherwise you know, other lands. Inability and laziness. Right? Not able to 
uh, find something not able to or willingness you you want but you are unable you you knock at every door and you don't get what you want regardless of how much you uh, do things you still don't get what you want you are unable inability that is uh, a, a situation that causes a lot of stress too Likewise, the condition when you are able, but then this uh, laziness in the, you know, you don't feel, you don't feel yourself, you know, yani, uh, trying to benefit yourself is not spontaneous. It doesn't come from inside. It's like you have to be, you know, pushed. You have to be pressured <laughs> to do things for your own self, to benefit your own self at condition of kassel is 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 a, is a sickness that is very very troublesome like that like that with stinginess and being uh, a coward uh, يعني, afraid afraid of, of things many times you know and you shouldn't be afraid of and we are in a country where the scholars say if you fear if you are unable to show your religion and to practice it openly, then you're not allowed to live in that country. <laughs> right? And it is very true. Yeah. And some people are so scared, even though there, there are no, no reasons to be scared. There are no reasons to be scared. Right? But then they are scared. You know, they imagine things and so on and so forth. Uh, likewise, dala in be, uh, being indebted and being overcome by people, these uh, these attacks, for instance, that they have on Islam and Muslims. <laughs> this is part of being compelled by humans, by other humans. You know, they they throw all kinds of accusations and. You know, you are guilty without without having done anything. <laughs> yeah. Quite innocent, yet you are viewed, you are treated as someone who is uh, a criminal or someone who is guilty or someone who has to explain himself in the least, you know. The least is you have to explain, you have to apologize for other people's mistakes and crimes, the likes of that. You see this, this dua is very powerful. You are seeking refuge with Allah from being overcome by debts and overcome and compelled, right? Intimidated by the humans. So this is a dua that needs to be done on a continuous basis. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all able will push away all kinds of these harms from you. And we will stop here this time. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.